think there's an afterlife. And by the way, you're a doctor of what? Yes, I'm a doctor of chemistry, PhD chemist and PhD physical chemist. Yeah, I'm specialized into the different nanosystem, into the different type of nanosystem. Is there life after death? Uh, that is a philosophical question that people are asking since the beginning of civilization. No, I believe that there is uh, no life after that in a sense like most of the religious, uh, most of the religion presents to us or in a sense what we will think about the life as a physical life that exists. But I believe that there is a quite a possible chance that there is a preservance of information because essentially the brain is both chemical and electromagnetic machine. And nobody really know what will happen after, you know, when the person die. Or actually, we don't actually know yet exactly what is the exact definition of that. You believe in God? There may be an existence of the supreme architect of the universe or the existence of the supreme being, yes, but in a God as a physical embodiment of the person with a beard or any of the existing religion embodiment, no. Michelangelo has got a lot to, to answer for in doing that picture of God in a pink nighty reaching out his finger to touch Adam's finger. God's nothing like that. He's a spirit, the Bible says. From the atoms through the universe, there's architectural order. Am I right? There is an architectural order, but there is also order of self-assembly. So it's self-assembled order, you know, and... Uh, Hang on, self-assemble? What self-assembles itself? There's a lot of things that can self-assemble itself, like in a supramolecular chemistry, you can have... For example, very simple, if you just drop the bunch of balls, you know, they will assemble mainly into the lattices of the hexagonal shapes, so that you can see... Yeah, so. but the balls already exist. They already exist, but yeah. I'm talking about the self-assembly of the structure after. The universe has its begin. There was probably another universe before, and there is a universe goes through the stages of the expansion and contraction. Doctor, what do you think of Jesus and what he said? I think that he was a historic figure. Now, I am not a religious person. I think that he is a historic figure, and I think that all of the major religions have a good things they essentially taught or teach us how to be a good person and a good human. Are you a good person morally? I don't know. I think people that know me will say so. Yes. <laughs> you know, the way to find out is compare yourself to the Ten Commandments. So you're familiar with the Ten Commandments? Absolutely, yes. And, you know, Ten Commandments, they are the basis for all of the legality and of what we, what we define as a good person, regardless if that person is religious or not, you know. Okay, well, let's go through some of them and see how you do. The Seventh Commandment, are you familiar with that? You shall not commit adultery? Yeah, sure. Have you ever committed adultery? No. Do you know where Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Did you know that? Well, that's not really the definition of adultery. That I well, have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Not with a lust like I, since I married, you know, not with a lust like a lust that well, I Since want you were married. But of course, I mean, you want to date somebody, you know, before and stuff like that. So you look at the woman like a nice woman, you know, like so. Yeah. Have you had sex before marriage? Yes, of course, <laughs> like everybody else. But that's not, look, you know what, there is a, yeah, so there is a lot of things. So you can interpret the, the Ten Commandments in many different ways. Yes. So. Number nine, how many lies have you told in your life? I usually don't lie. So you have told a few. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, in your whole life? No. Is that no. one of those lies? No. Ever downloaded music off the internet that's not yours? Not really, I'm not into music. Not really? Have you ever used God's name in vain? That's the third commandment. Always. Always. <laughs> no. Well, yes, but that, look, there is a thing that is a morality definition and there is a definition of what is served to serve the religion and expansion of the religion, you know, like those commands, those things that you are telling me that serves for the expansion of the religion is not something that defines somebody being a good person or not. So when you and use... I'm withdrawing my and at this point this is obviously going to be used for something that I am not supporting and that I don't like. At this point this dear man became incredibly uncomfortable. I knew I was about to lose him, so I shared the gospel in testimonial form. Watch what happens. You know, I've broken those commandments too. I've lied and stolen, look with lust. Let me give my testimony because it's so important to me and I really care about you. 
I knew that if I stood before God on Judgment Day, knowing God has seen my thought life, that I'd be condemned. I'd end up in hell. But the Bible says God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and He made a way for you to be forgiven all your sins. Jesus suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. You can have everlasting life as a free gift if you just repent and trust in Jesus. He's the Savior of the world. Man, this is the most wonderful word you could ever hear. The gift of God is eternal life. You don't have to be religious. All you have to do is give up your sins, forsake them, and trust in Jesus as your Savior. Look, what you just told me, you know, like it is, it is essentially a very nice thought, but it is something that all the people wish, you know, to be like a, you know, repentant out. Look, I don't believe that there is a God in a physical form or in a form of the human being sitting there, you know, and I don't believe that there is a Jesus sitting next to him in a human form, you know, and I think that if there is a God, it's something much bigger than what we can imagine, you know, that some supra, that is some kind of the supreme architect of the universe or some uh, supramolecular being, some, you know, some being way bigger than us, you know, and I don't think that he, and if, and if such supreme being exists, you know, I don't think that he can anyway account for all of us or really care for all of us, you know, otherwise what you see what is happening in the world and to each of us individually and to a good people that experience bad things will not be happening. Can I give you a book that I've written? I think you'd find sure, it interesting. I'm always open-minded for okay. a book. Okay, okay, let me grab it for you. Stay there. It's called Scientific Facts in the Bible. I think you'd find that very interesting. And you wrote this? Yes, that's what I do. Yes, okay, so... It's been a delight to talk to you. Will you think about what we talked about? Well, about scientific facts in the Bible. You know, there is actually... Bible is a collection of the chrestomati, what we will say today, you know, like collection of a lot of different writings by anonymous author, essentially a Wikipedia of its time, we can even say, you know, like so. And there are a lot of, a lot of empirical facts, a lot of empirical observations, you know, by the priests in the Judaic era and right after until like the... might be about the Anno Domini 300. The Bible was put together in its form like this and there is a lot of facts which are observed and which are described in the terms of the supranatural origin but which we can now explain in a scientific facts you know so do you think you might read this Yes, of course. Look, I'm very open-minded for reading different stuff. I had actually, I had actually read the Bible at the time, you know, and I am very familiar with the history of the Bible and the history of civilization, you know. I, I appreciate your book, you know. I love seeing the interesting and I love seeing... I signed the it for you. Thank I, you, sir. And, and you'll think about what we talked about. Uh, sure, yeah, you know, I mean, and I am going to enjoy your book, thank you. I like the book on controversial topics, you know. And, oh, that's uh, well, if we ever see each other in here, I come here regularly, let me know what you think, okay? Sure. Okay, nice thank to you. Meet you. Okay, nice to meet you. Have thank you. Same to you. People often say I'd love you to talk to my unbelieving friend or family member. Well, why not send them this video? Just click on the share button and say, I'd love to know what you think of this. There's nothing offensive about that. Send it and then pray. Do it today. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, The Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of the most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com.